Knobbox Dance presents Dance Behind the Screen. Process production and social media. Hey members, welcome to our podcast. We are Knobbox Dance, a social media based company. We strive to say no to the box. We connect interdisciplinary art, technology, and artists to re envision the process of art making and sharing. Hola, hi everyone. This is Ye Jin Cho, your host of today's episode. In January, I had a great conversation with Jesus Mario, who is an academic director in the Department of Arts and a full time professor in theater at Universidad de las Americas Puebla in Mexico. As a filmmaker, Dr. Jesus Mario has premiered at major film festivals such as the Venice Film Festival, Shanghai Film Festival, and BFI in London, among others. In this episode, he shared his experiences of teaching improvisation to theater and dance major students, problematic teaching art at university settings, especially in Mexico, his book about aesthetic cone, and how social media affects filmmaking process. I work at the same university, Ud Lab, and we always talk about work. So personally, it was a meaningful time to know more about him as an artist through this interview. So hopefully you guys enjoy too. And if you have any questions or comments about our podcast, please, please, please don't hesitate to email us or send us a message through No Box Sense Facebook or Instagram. Thanks, enjoy it! Hello, this is Mario, my boss. <laughs> Thank you for your agreement. Thank you for sharing your time for this podcast. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for inviting me. Thank you. I'm so excited because we always talk about work. I, I always find you to get approval. <laughs> I know. <laughs> and now it's time I can also know you more about as an artist, film directors. So, my first question is You obtained a Doctor of Philosophy degree from the European Grad School and has a Master of Arts degree from the Loyal Central School of Speech and Drama in London. And your undergrad studies were carried out at the ITESM campus, Monterrey, right? Right. That's a lot international experiences. <laughs> What made you to choose to study in these schools internationally and how was your experience? Well, at, at that time, I was like in, interested in, in doing uh, some work and, and study in some other you know, country and specifically mm -hmm. in London. I was very interested in, in being in London for a while. So I, I looked for schools all mm -hmm. around and I found the Royal Central School, mm -hmm. which is a, a, a great school and it's like a conservatory. Mm -hmm. So I, I, there was a, a teacher I, I used to read before, mm -hmm. which she's uh, Susan Melrose. She, she, at that time she had a book called uh, Semiotics of the Dramatic Text. Mm -hmm. So, for, so I, I was very attracted to, to work with her and I said, well, it's London, it's, uh, I don't know, it's to work with Susan Melrose, so it, mm -hmm. and, I, and I got a, a scholarship like, from the British Council, wow. so I said, well, this sounds great, <laughs> that, this sounds great, so, so I, 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 before I was working in Mexico, but I, I really needed to connect to mm -hmm. different people and to learn new things, so, so I, so that's why I started there, mm -hmm. but then I, they, then I stayed a little bit in Europe, but then I came back to, to Mexico to keep working. And then I did the, the PhD, but the, the PhD was a different relation to the, to the, the country because I didn't I, I did have to be there for the oh, it's four years. residency. I, I, okay. I was yeah. there for residency, yeah. How but was, it, um, I guess, theater work styles or film styles? Or education curriculum. What are the differences here? Your experience in Mexico and London. Well, actually, my master's degree was uh, in performance studies, uh -huh. and and here I, I, I studied theater like in a in a more like conventional way. Uh -huh. So so here it was like a mix of of Stanislavski practices here in Mexico, mm -hmm. 
influenced by Mexican teachers and so 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 it was it was very interesting but but in performance studies what I learned it was like a very multicultural and different practices mm -hmm. and approaches totally radical in many ways so so uh, it helped me to understand my, my practice from a more eclectic and mm. I don't know complex mm -hmm. complex way mm -hmm. because I, Susan Melrose who was running the program at, at that time would bring not only English teachers but teachers from all over the world mm. to give us workshops like Balinese mm -hmm. dance and and I don't know Gardenizia you know, the, the Polish uh, theatre company Wow. So so uh -huh. so, that internationality mm -hmm. really helped me, and I really loved it. How about English? I mean, language barrier. It was it was very hard, <laughs> very very hard, especially with the English accent. Uh -huh. And also, I remember that the first class was Shakespearean uh, acting, I think, mm -hmm. or experience directing it, I don't really remember, but it was like in Shakespearean <laughs> yes. um, English, mm -hmm. which was like very, very hard. Mm -hmm. so, but, but at the same time, um, so, somehow, well, you kind of get, get used to it and then, right. yeah. Mm -hmm. And before I, I was, a, well, when, I, when I was very young, I was an exchange student in, oh, Can okay. in Canada. Mm -hmm. so, so I kind of knew a bit of mm -hmm. English, but, but still the accent. Mm -hmm. It's it's hard, but it's kind of nice to re recreate yourself. I mean, to reinvent yourself in a new language because it's mm -hmm. everything it's seen and heard from a different perspective. Mm -hmm. So it's a new mm -hmm. world. So that's great. Did right, it happen right. To you? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And also the good thing is, especially here in Mexico, I can't speak Spanish or you can. I can. Oh, yeah. a bit. <laughs> <laughs> and I understand a little bit. So. Some information I miss it, but I think some information I don't have to know. <laughs> right, right. Which is great, <laughs> which is yeah, great. Institutional <laughs> right. environment. It's so I think it's both, but about. definitely, yeah, it's new experience. Now you're the academic director in the art department and the full time teacher in theater department at Udlab. Could you describe your day? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, could you describe your day? When do you wake up? What kind of breakfast? <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> no, your day and your roles as an academic director. So how's your day going as an academic academic director? Well, um, first, it's very important that I keep my um, I don't know my so called creative mm -hmm, life mm -hmm, right. uh, like apart somehow mm -hmm. or it's it, there are some limits to the academic director so somehow not I, I don't know in a normal day first I work in my my own pra uh, creative practice mm -hmm. as an artist as, as yeah. an artist exactly uh, as, as a filmmaker and then I I start to have meetings. <laughs> <laughs> How many meetings? <laughs> meeting after meeting, an appointment, uh, an appointment, like in any institutional. Right. But but the nice part is to to see that things happen and that uh, you can accompany more than anything. Mm -hmm. Accompany artists like you or mm -hmm. like like our colleagues that mm -hmm. bring very exciting things to to their academic world so to accompany that it's like beautiful mm. so all the meetings and paperwork and <laughs> s seems kind of worth it mm -hmm. uh, when when there are these little flashes of, mm -hmm. of <laughs> each other's work showing up in front of the students or for the students or with the students so mm -hmm. yeah but, but but the everyday life is kind of kind of boring <laughs> <laughs> you are listening to now box dance such a great leader. I'm not talking this one because we're recording. <laughs> <laughs> but I think a leader is like, you know, you always listen our opinions and try to if we have any problem instead of like, okay, do this. Like you're really good at either correcting it or direct, give guidelines. So I'm really enjoying working with you and I think it's such a pleasure in this art department. Well, that's so a, you, that's yeah, a sweet so. Thank yeah, thank you. 
we both teach dramatur dramaturgia <laughs> this the semester. The same student. The same student. <laughs> you teach to a theater student, and I teach theater and dance combined groups. Right. So can we talk about what is dramaturgy and dramaturgs? The role of dramaturgs in theater, because in dance, the history of dramaturgy, I guess, it's not that long. Or the term you use here uh, in Spanish, dramaturgs, dramaturg, sorry, it's playwright. And then dance dramaturgs, dramaturgs' role is different. So can you define, explain more about dramaturg and the roles of a dramaturg? Yeah, yeah, exactly. As, as you point out, in, in Spanish, well, uh, well, at least in Mexican Spanish, the dramaturg is the, uh, like the play mm -hmm. writer. So, so the class is it's about playwriting. Of course, we go through the Aristotelic uh, funda foundations mm -hmm. of playwriting, Aristotle. But then we, we go through a series of workshop-like classes to we, we workshop the possibilities of what to be a play writer means, mm -hmm. would mean today, especially in, in post-traumatic terms, mean where the, the author is not really the authority anymore, mm. but there are other possibilities. And also I was talking to the students the other day about Hélène Sixou's uh, plays and, and she's, she always throws fragments to the page. I mean, they, they, it's very uh, unconclusive what she's writing, so she, she opens up a lot of potential um, interpretations and collaborations with the play writer. Mm -hmm. So the dramaturgy somehow is this writing but that is not oppressive to the, the actors or to the director, but it's more like another piece of a puzzle that is being mm -hmm. made. So with the students in theater, we, we go through what these words that are written by, by a person mean today. Mm -hmm. Of course, we go through these total authors that say everything but also uh, to experiment about these new possibilities that relate to other public practices like carnivals or mm -hmm. rituals and, and how the dramaturgy or the, the writing participates. So we learn also from that. Mm -hmm. It's interesting because I think Dramaturgs in dance, the synonym could be idea translator or archivist or researcher. Right. So sometimes, I think more in Korea, because we are so used to just creating movement itself, sometimes we don't know what's the meaning behind of the movement itself. So sometimes they visit rehearsals, dramaturgs visit rehearsals, yeah. and then they write down some of the words that choreographers use, and then they summarize rehearsal processes and then they write program notes. Right. They write synopsis, so more like how they translate our um, words and the movement itself. I see. And then so they like give us, they give like guidelines and then choreographers or artistic director like do some choice making. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's great that we are sharing students because they, when they come to my class, they mm -hmm. come with new ideas and, mm -hmm. and understandings of what you taught them. Mm -hmm. And so the, the classes get really in haste. That's good. <laughs> I'm doing the right one. <laughs> <laughs> no, okay, cool. You also taught improvisation class last semester to both theater dance students, right? That's right. combined class. Can you share how you address the class and your experience in your class? Did our dance students behave well? <laughs> <laughs> they were great. They were, the, they were the best. Oh, yeah. Cool. They, and in, in this class, we had actors and dancers, which mm -hmm. was, who, who, which was very interesting because I think they each other learn from from their different process to what improvis improvisation mm -hmm. would mean. But we took the, um, we we departed from some acting techniques and some basic acting, acting te techniques based on actions, literal ac actions, mm -hmm. objectives. 
So we we work in many exercises. First, of course, had to do with uh, working with uh, like the capacity of creative freedom and of movement, but also with the possibility of understanding what an improvisation could be, mm-hmm. departing from the structure of mm-hmm. actions, objectives, mm-hmm. activities, and how to ha- to to be free in improvisation. You need some, some sort of structure in which you can be free, because uh, that that makes uh, makes some sort of uh, scenic mm-hmm. world where they can improvise. Mm. So 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 it was it was very very interesting for for both. Usually this class was for actors, but uh-huh. this is the first time or the second time is is taught for dancers and, I, uh-huh. and I, I think it was great to see uh-huh. the dancers to integrate some Stanislavski basic Stanislavski and, and some other um, acting techniques to their choreographies. Uh-huh. You talked about structured improvisation, right? Yeah. Can you talk about more about structured improvisation? Yeah. So, like, for example, the, the, the structure is, is invented every mm-hmm. time in each improvisation. Like, I mean, there is not, like, a universal right. structure mm-hmm. or anything like such as that, but, but there is somehow what, I, what I'm trying to, to say, perhaps there are some limits and, uh, and for example, to, to play a, a game, mm-hmm. there are rules. And right, stuff. more like scores right. or guidelines. Guidelines. You so, give. Uh-huh. so the freedom you get in, the, in a improvisation is within those, those structures that uh-huh. are totally uh-huh. improvised too in some, in some way. But with that understanding, then the student feel more, I don't know, confident perhaps mm-hmm. to freely, I mean, I mean, uh, saying that in mm-hmm. quotation, quotation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so yeah, so, so they can they can, but because before when when they come to the class they say well, improvisation is anything you can do, anything yeah, and no I mean you need I know, of course you need right. this guideline structure mm-hmm. techniques in order to to be totally open to mm-hmm. improvise mm-hmm. and so. don't forget to say no to the box. Well, let's talk about this one first then. Um, in our recent episode with Miguel Gutierrez, the choreographer, his uh, dancer, artist, he talked about, we asked, what's your definition of improvisation? And he said, doing something you don't know what the hell is going to happen. Right. So can I ask what's your definition of improvisation, if you can explain? Maybe. Well, yeah, it's, it's, it's interesting. Because what, as an spectator, I see that anything can happen. Mm-hmm. But as a performer, you know anything can happen within the, the rules of our game. Right. Performance improv is different. Yeah. Yes. Exactly. So in, in, in that, yeah, exactly. So in that sense, um, I, would, I, would, I would go with, with the possibility of more... Than freedom, I, I like the, more to think about an exploration, uh-huh. uh, an exploration uh, of something you don't know. Mm-hmm. So it's an unknown territory, but within our consensus of what that is a territory is, mm-hmm. because because then if it's if it can be anything, then perhaps it's not an actual act of improvisation, right, right. Mm-hmm. but whatever. So, in, in those sort of uh, experiments we were doing in, in, in the class to see, okay, how do you see this world? Mm. I remember this philosopher, Jean-Luc Nancy, when he, when he talks about contemporary art today. Mm-hmm. And, and he, he says that contemporary art now requires that the artist not only creates the piece, but creates the definition of art itself. Mm. Okay, cool. We can go to the next question. What is the problematic or pros and cons teaching art at university setting, especially in Mexico? <laughs> well, it's it's well, it's very hard. In, in I think in any 
countries. Context, yeah, maybe, but but in terms of that, um, the institution has its policies and its way of of working that sometimes might not be as helpful to the student as yeah, one. Especially would. art, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Especially with the, all the, the that I don't know all all that world of accreditations and rankings and, <laughs> and, and I don't know what, what they require from the teachers and everything is like a huge bureaucracy where mm-hmm. sometimes we are spending most of our energy and time just to fulfill this Kafkian exactly. bureaucracy right. I don't know this administrative world mm-hmm. where I don't know how, how much of that is helping our students to really mm-hmm. construct their their own identity and artistic identity mm-hmm. and, and work mm-hmm. but still I think we as I don't know artists working within the university we are always looking for these little moments of where the I don't know I'm going to say it in a, in a, say it <laughs> in a, in a, in a stereotypical way but this there is these little cracks in the, in the system where the, you say okay here we can find more opportunities for our students to to develop their own work with mm-hmm. freedom and and in and in Mexico, um, well, um, unfortunately, arts are is not seen as a priority. Right, the main, not no. mainstream. No. Yeah. So it's it's even it's even harder, mm-hmm. I, I would think, and, and there are lots of prejudices about art and artists mm-hmm. so it's a it's a huge challenge for our students to to decide to, to choose this uh-huh. this path i would think in some other countries yeah least. yeah definitely yeah. yeah and also i find that in this country this colonial past is a problem sometimes because the students sometimes really i don't know um favor or how I say it. Um, they have great expectation about some international artist mm. and diminish their own culture or diminish their own artist. Mm. I mean, it would be great to have this, I don't know, uh, meltings mm-hmm. and understanding in a hybrid way, but, but, but sometimes I have to say, look, you don't live in Seattle. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, or you don't live in I don't know New York. You live here in, right, in, right. in and and your your background is this. I mean, okay, it's we admire many artists from all over the world and from New York and from everywhere. But I have to re- remember the students. Like, look, your stories are here. Right. I mean, it's not your culture. Your, your culture. History. Do you think it's because we have so many international professors here? Well, I I I, I wouldn't think so. No, yeah. no. I I think uh, because I taught in some other mm-hmm. uh, public university where, where it wasn't the case and, and the students were the same. Maybe it's generation. Yeah. Yeah, maybe it's generation. Maybe it has to do with the colonial mm-hmm. Mexican past. I mean, mm-hmm. I, I see it. I, I see it even in myself. I see, I see all these, um, I don't know, stories about domination and everything. It's, mm-hmm. it's there both in the, in the people. So somehow uh, I, I find it hard for to, to deal with that and our students it's like but fast food you know the yeah. education or yeah. like I just learned this one I need outcome right now yeah yeah, sometimes, outcome yeah, yeah. sometimes I feel like maybe we don't need answer here we just do this activity and yeah. then you just you know look at the process itself yeah. slowly that would be that would be great yeah mm-hmm. for those listening who are wondering or considering their career path after graduating university, <laughs> what advice do you have? I'm laughing because sometimes <laughs> it's a tutorial they ask me and then I tell them, I don't know what I'm going to do after this job too. So exactly. it's just life question. <laughs> but do you have any um, advice? Well, no, it's, it's, it's hard. It's, <laughs> it's, 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 hard. it's hard to say because it, I, I think my, my own career path has been very arbitrary. I've been from one place to the other and I'll be... I have been like following my desire somehow without really thinking in 
what it would be better for mm -hmm. my actual professional career. So sometimes I think I should have done this or that in terms of uh, more, I don't know, solid career. But at the same time, why would I want that? So mm -hmm. if, if what I want is at, at every point to follow my my gut or whatever mm -hmm. I needed to do. So I don't know, I, I wouldn't know how to advise anyone except but to follow what makes you really excited about mm. what you're doing. Or your passion. Your passion, yeah. yeah. And sometimes, I mean, uh, talking about the academic world again, sometimes it's, it's so expensive. It is. That, okay, nobody can <laughs> <laughs> listen to this, but of course they can. <laughs> but sometimes one has to think if it's really worth it to study a very expensive university where you are like gonna, here like here <laughs> like when you, you are going to have a huge loan for the future as an artist that's true so you have to be really really I don't know clear that you want this it's, it's not only like you have to do it no it's you want this because you don't have to there are many ways you can right. you can get what what you need and those has to be the most expensive and mm -hmm. especially in the world of the art because right. at, at the end sometimes it doesn't matter where you come from at lot I mean of course you have easier easier way to get there yeah, <laughs> easier way to get there but, right. but but also I don't know there are, there are more ways now with internet and everything mm -hmm. than ever I would think create discuss and advocate for art no box dance Cool, let's switch our topic a little bit to your book and your films. Can you explain the book you published in, please fix me if I say it wrong, Aesthetic Con? Right. Yeah, okay, good. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Theatrical Acts at the Limits of Philosophy. Yeah, sure. Well, well actu actually, this was my, this is like a rewriting of my dissertation, of my mm -hmm. PhD dissertation, mm -hmm. so it's not really a new research. And it, and it had to do with uh, reading French philosophers. And I, I, it was interesting that, well, it was interesting for me to find that philosophers, when they wanted to talk about the end of philosophy or the end of thought, they would bring into their writing theatrical examples. Mm -hmm. Like the stage of the, of the world is going to, and and they act or so so I, I said why are they using theatrical jargon when they talk about apocalyptic things? Mm, okay. So then what I did is like to go through these a series of exempl some exemplary texts mm -hmm. and to find the the use of theatrical word and, and to uh, I don't know speculate a little bit mm -hmm. on the, on what that had to do with. With her work and with theater, so so Aestheticon was I, I I call that machinery of using these theatrical and aesthetic figures as a way of when when they couldn't think anymore philosophically they had to use art and theater specifically ah, to okay. uh -huh. so, so so that was it's the like, limits of philosophy uh -huh. that's so, why the title is. Yeah, so, okay. so it's a, a thinking with figures. So it was like, I, I, this sounds more like art. Mm -hmm. And of course, I, I studied Jean-Luc Nancy, Derrida, mm -hmm. Alain Badiou, and some others. Yeah. Do you still use your book? Like, give assignment to students of to read? Of course not. <laughs> Why? Of course not. No, I mean, that was... The, no, I, I, I actually the, never did. No? No, no, no. I mean, they all love it. Like, books... <laughs> from our stu I mean yeah. our teacher yeah you're right but but I don't know and it was so I don't know, specific in, in my quest mm -hmm. that, I don't know um, for some reason and and it's related to my PhD so mm -hmm. I, I also thought that it, this was a, another <laughs> conclusion of the PhD uh -huh, so, uh, uh -huh. but but yeah I mean you're right I could have you so, <laughs> right <laughs> You wrote and directed many films such as Asi, Masa Aya, Tell Me, right. <laughs> Ventanas al Mar, right. e and La Sangre Barbara. Barbara, exactly. 
Spanish master. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. What does your creative process look like in general? Well, film films are quite a long, long process, uh -huh. and um, I I really enjoy writing for film because it never ends. <laughs> like first you write with with words, but then you are writing kind of. A, while doing the shooting, right. and then you're writing what you're editing, even you, if you're not actually the actual editor, but you're everyone's still writing, so it's a, it can be a, a, a collect, collective mm -hmm. way of writing some, somehow. But um, I don't know, the, um, I try to be very disciplined, but it never comes what I'm expecting to get. Mm -hmm. So it's also very patient to do whatever I'm working with. I get interested in something, so it can be some theme, some very explicit theme, but also can be some image or some pain mm -hmm. or joy mm -hmm. that it's stuck on me, and then from there I, I, start, I, st I start to pull the film mm -hmm. itself. <laughs> I don't know if it, that happens to you with uh, your choreography. Uh -huh. Yeah, like inspiration process. Or, I don't know, the creative process itself. Or... Yeah, I think it depends, but... I feel like I get inspired by when I watch other choreography yeah, right. and then I try not to do it because right. it's easy to copy it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's good, that's good. Yeah, that's true too. Yeah. That happens. But yeah. So do you spend more when you do pre-production or post-production? Or which stage or phase you like it more? Or you to, hate to it? Honest, <laughs> to, be, to be honest, I... I, I don't know if like is a word, but I'm more engaged mm. with the pre-production, with the writing, mm. and with the editing. The shooting... You don't like shooting. I, <laughs> you don't want to work <laughs> with the real people. <laughs> I, know that, I know that's film, what film is about, <laughs> so it's sad. But shooting, yeah, well, you're right. <laughs> I don't like to work with the, with the real people. <laughs> but no, it, I... It's I, of course I like it. Mm -hmm. Well, it's not that I like it because like it, it's. I, I I don't think I like anything about it. <laughs> I, I'm just an addict kind of thing. It's more like a, an addict relationship to it. Mm -hmm. I have to do it. Right, right. But it's not like oh, it, this is joyful. No, it, it never is for me. Because yeah. it's our work. Because it's your work. It's work, and also it gets I get panic all the mm -hmm. time, and I think I'm. You're doing questioning. The You're I'm questioning. Uh -huh. I think I'm doing the worst thing ever. <laughs> from and I'm, what, 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 mm -hmm. those sorts of questions and also I see it and I suffer for it because I didn't get the lighting I wanted mm -hmm. so it's it's not a joyful but it's like an addict that I have to go on but maybe with the now that, now that we're talking when, when I'm editing I have the have more control than when it's shooting it's yeah like, I love <laughs> editing too because I can do whatever yeah. I want right <laughs> you have such a set of control it's, it's hard right. but then it's magical Mm -hmm. It's like suddenly you put this face in front of and say, wow, that's, that's mm -hmm. wonderful. And sometimes you didn't see that during sh right. shooting itself uh -huh. or writing. But, yeah. So. so you also write, you also be at the moment when they're shooting and you also write, I mean, sorry, edit. I have done it when, when yeah. I, I don't have the money to, <laughs> to, to hire someone who would be... Happy to do it, but uh -huh. so it has, it has been more like because I had to and I want to finish the film. So, I, yeah, for example, mm -hmm. yeah, in, in half of them, I've, I've oh. done that. Can we talk about your recent work, Juego Adentro? Right. This is like my my most recent film. It's, uh -huh. it's screening in, sorry, movie theater, right? Uh, Touring. Yeah, yeah, it hasn't been premiered yet. Uh -huh. It's, I don't know where or when it's uh -huh. going to be. Premiere, but soon I hope. Yes. <laughs> so this is the like this is a, a, fi a fiction feature film. Mm -hmm. It's not the, the La Sangre Barra that you mentioned was a documentary. Okay. So this one is like a fiction film, mm -hmm. and it's it, it was it was great in somehow because actually in that in this film it was great to do. Uh, of course, I'm contradicting myself because I just talk about <laughs> how much I hate it. But uh, in in a way, now that it has happened, I I can see. Oops, sorry. You okay. <laughs> so now that it has happened, I can see that 
um, it was a, a very an, an enlightening experience mm. to work with the actors I work with uh, and the crew because this time I, I did something that is totally crazy and anyone has done films know how crazy it is but it would be to do a feature film with four crew members it was, it was crazy and I don't know Aww. very hard so it took me a lot Long, a lot of time. Of course, I th I thought this was a great idea, but it took me. <laughs> it was harder than anything because wow. it was like a long, long, long process. Because how long did it take? Well, the the whole thing mm -hmm. took me like four or five years. Wow. The whole thing because the problem was uh, that I thought well, we can do it the four of us, but then I had to do a longer process of mm. shooting. And on top of this academic director job. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Well, that's that's a good point. Yeah, so it was it was very hard. And at, at the beginning, I didn't have funding, so I said, mm. okay, let's do it. We're friends. <laughs> we we are gonna do it because we believe in this. And then, in in late, in the, and that's that takes time too because then I had to do many things mm -hmm. myself. So, but then at the end, we did have funding for post production, which was great. Oh, so that's good. Yeah. That's good. And it's, it's, it's a film about what's going on in this country. Mm -hmm. It's about violence, but it's not the violence that we see in the, in, on the press or mm -hmm. on the series, but it's, about, it's the violence within the culture in a, in a very rheumatic way. Mm -hmm. and how, how, the question is, how are we going to get out of this? Mm -hmm. What is narco culture and people that is... Hey, but it, but it, that these people that do not have many options to get out of the mafia or, or of the violence they live with, mm -hmm. and so it's it's I, I wanted to to make that question, and now is fortunately more present than ever in our culture. So hopefully we can find solution. Yeah. <laughs> you are listening to Now Box Dance. Have you seen a shift how people consume art with the evolution of social media? And how does social media influence your career? Well, of course, I see a change with uh -huh. all the streaming platforms. Mm -hmm. In, on one side, you have the possibility of, of watching many films you didn't. Mm -hmm. but, but what you miss now is the possibility, or at least in Mexico, to find the film you want. Now you have a offer of many films but if you want to see a specific film from 1971 mm -hmm. that was shot by whoever mm -hmm. then that possibility is I don't find it so much it's not on one. Netflix no it's, it's <laughs> not on Netflix it's not on Amazon Prime it's not. Right. yeah so it's so now I have to accept whatever they give me mm. and I miss um, that possibility of getting exactly what I want Mm. Uh, or what I was curious about but it's great that now you have so many possibilities mm -hmm. it's, I think that but now I, what I find also uh, I remember André Breton's um, exercise or a game to go from one cinema to the to, I mean he would, he, he would go to one cinema to other cinema in the middle of films to make his own film Mm. from one fragment of one, one fragment of the second one. So I, so I feel now the practice of viewing films, for example, it's more like Breton's uh, game. Because now you can change so easily right. from one uh, I don't know, film to one mm -hmm. series. And then you kind of, without really noticing, you're really constructing as a user your own film. Mm -hmm. It's a huge, long film where... where you are looking, I mean, you stop, when, where do you stop the, the series you're watching? Perhaps wherever you didn't find something that interested you. So you are then seeing the parts that interest you from each series and, and movie. So suddenly you're actually make. I mean, editing a yourself. film yourself. Uh -huh, yourself, yeah. And then you, you think everyone is doing it, but yeah, no. Yeah, that's interesting you're, points, yeah. You're choosing exactly some fragments. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, they are different from the fragments I, mm -hmm. I, I'm choosing and when am I stopping so 
you think or one thinks that no, I mean it's a normal thing, but no, you're constructing the film you want to see, mm, mm. and of course that's what I miss from from the actual cinemas. Mm-hmm. I, I still go, you know, as often as before mm-hmm. that you're stuck, mm-hmm. and you can you, you have to watch. You, 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 watch. Pay, you pay. And, or you cannot fast forward. If you're with someone else, then it's harder to leave. Of course you can leave, but it's harder, so you you have to wait. But that waiting gives you a film and mm-hmm. gives you new emotions. And, and now our students are not willing to do that, I, I, I think. But also what I have seen is now the films are changed. Mm-hmm. Now they have to give you, even Netflix and everything, they have to give you every minute uh, a new climax. Attention, yeah. <laughs> and a new problem, a new conflict. But then what kind of film are you watching? It's just uh. like... Shock value, like John Woods would <laughs> say. Clips, 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 clips. Exactly. That's, that's, that's my sense. So, so, like, our students stay there. You it's, feel it when you see their project, too? or Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Huh. That's yeah. interesting. Yeah, it wouldn't, even with the bigger pieces, they are, they are, not, they are not Less willing to... Less development yeah. or, like, times. Yeah, it's more like shocking minute. Collapse. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I remember a, a film, a, a Mexican film director, Ripstein. He, he made very uh, long films, and so he was once in a screening, um, and then he was like, he was more like, he wasn't a focus group, but he, but he invited some people to see the film to see and and to learn what what they thought about it. Mm-hmm. So one of the the audience members said, "Look, I." I feel that your film is too slow. I mean, it's really slow. So uh, he's he's a he's a old man and uh, mm-hmm. you know with a great presence. So he turned around <laughs> and, and he said, "I don't think my film was slow. I think you're in a hurry." Aww, <laughs> so that's that's right. I mean, the, the one that, that is in a hurry. Like is you. commercial, every single clip. Yeah, yeah. So you are in a hurry. So maybe this film is not for you. And I I really like that that. I don't know that point of view to think. No, it's not that. It's slow. No, no, it's not that. It's long. He said you're in a hurry and you want to. Yeah, but then, the question is how how profound or how deep can you go with one minute? I don't know. Okay, cool. Before you go, we ask all our guests to answer those four questions in a flash. Are you ready? Right, ready. Yes. Listo. <laughs> Maybe. Flash four. If you had a TED to recommend one resource to our audience, what would it be? What would it be? I can't speak English today. What would it be? It could be book, podcast, someone to follow on Facebook, or a website. Music? Music? Yeah, sure. Well, I, I, I would go with, with music, with like, I don't know, Philip Glass, Michael Nyman, mm-hmm. Spotify. Okay. Or any other. Oh, what was the first performance you saw? In my life? Like yes, a... your, your life. Or it can be like professional work. I, I would, you know what? I would think now it came to me. Mm-hmm. When I was a, a very, very small kid, I saw a fiddler on the roof. <laughs> Do you think social media has a positive influence on the art world? Yes or no? Well, or both? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I think so. I think so. I, 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 I think so. What I, what I think is that one has to distance oneself mm. from the, the, the thing because the algorithms are like are there to get us, and then we think we are seeing the world and we are just seeing our little Part, yeah. miserable algorithm. Absolutely. Yeah. So yes or no. Okay. What is your favorite social media platform? Vimeo. Vimeo. Yay! <laughs> I really like it. Like a YouTube, I think. Mm-hmm. Cool. Before you go, can you share your social media handles with us so people can stay connect with us? Oh. Oh, sorry, with you <laughs> or us. Follow oh, our social media. No box dance. Well, I have Twitter. Uh huh. J. Well, it's like Jesus actually. <laughs> without, I mean, Mexican. Yes. Jesus Mario M A R I O. Oh. Yes. Lozano, mm-hmm. L-O-Z-A-N-O. Mm-hmm. Okay. So that's my cool. Twitter account. And then you have Facebook? Your Facebook. I think it's the same. 
same? Can I follow you? Please. <laughs> I would be very, very... <laughs> okay. I'll not bother you. <laughs> no. Um, I, I don't think I, I use Facebook that much. No? no I, I forget. I, I read things in Twitter, but... And Instagram is... But my Instagram is... Do you have Instagram too? Can I, I follow you? Do you have email? Do you have website? Can I follow everything? Yes, please. <laughs> Yeah. Yes. But I'm not, uh, I, I don't write. So Twitter is the key that people can stay connected with you. Yeah, okay. I would think so. Cool. Well, thank you so much, Jesus Mario. It was such a pleasure to thank you. have a conversation with you. It was not great. talking about work. <laughs> I know, I know. It was great. Um, thanks so much for thinking of me. Sure. Well. Thank you. Thanks for taking your time to tune into the House Behind the Screen, a bi-monthly interview series where we go behind the screen to question process, product, and social media. Be sure to follow us on social media, at KNOW Box Dance. See you next time and don't forget to say no to the box.